Guys, Zoe here from OneGlassTrader.com and welcome to my Baby Pips Forex Education video series. So in this video we'll be looking at Grade 2 Japanese Candlesticks and we are looking at Japanese Candlestick Anatomy. So if you're just tuning in and you wanted to look at all the previous videos inside Grade 1, head over to my channel and uh, you'll get all the videos there that talk about support and resistance levels and all the contents and components inside there so like i said to you before this video talks about japanese candlesticks anatomy and if you watch my previous videos on japanese candlesticks you'll know that uh, that mr steve nissen is the uh, guru for japanese candlesticks so i've actually taken the clip of the video i'm going to show from the previous video um, because he does a webinar on Japanese candlesticks and I've kind of really cut them into different sections to kind of fit within the uh, contents on baby pips. So again around the anatomy he'll talk about the, the different the different ways candles can be made around bullish candles, bearish candles, dojis, pin bars etc etc. So without further ado let me hand you over to Mr. Steve Nissen for his video on Japanese candlesticks anatomy. Thank you. So who's in control on this session here? Remember, uh, for those who are new to candles, this is the opening and that's the closing because it's a white real body. All right, the bulls, the market opened uh, at the bottom of the white candle and closed at the, you know, let's get my little pointer here, and closed over here. And who's in control in the black real body? Market opened here. And closed here right the bears now what if we get something like this which is called the doji where the opening and closing are the same there's no rectangular portion who's in control is it the bulls or the bears right neither there's a balance of forces between the bulls and the bears and why is something like this valuable well let's look at this okay here we have a uh, tall green candle the bulls are in charge. Now, notice something interesting. On the next session, aren't the closes the same, right? The close, get the arrow over here again. The close over here is the same as the close over here. But on this red arrow session, that doji session, the there's an equilibrium of forces between the bulls and the bears. The Japanese would say the market is tired. And what does that mean? That means the odds of a turn are greater than they would be on that tall green candle. So in one candlestick line, we get a sense that the force of the market, in this case the bullish force, is losing momentum. So for example, the high is here in Google a couple of months ago, a doji. And a lot of things you could do with doji. Obviously, this is not a course on candlesticks. You could set up the doji as a potential resistance area. And if the market closes above it, it's actually a bullish breakout. But a very basic thing you could do with doji is use it as resistance. And obviously, not ever, a, after every doji, the market's going to sell off. But you could see that with the doji and the market kind of topping out uh, right around the same area, it increases the likelihood of the market reversing. And there you have it. I really hope you found that useful. I'd be very grateful if you could like, share and comment on this video and also take the time out just to subscribe to my channel. I really want to try to get these educational videos out there to as many traders as possible and really show them the way that they can learn to better themselves in Forex trading and also become a more consistent and profitable trader. And I shall see you on the next video.